So with the antenna, it's actually up in the air, like so. Um, there's a little bit of breeze, but now, I don't think this is just perfectly optimised yet, but if we look at the SWR here, hopefully you can see that. So you can see that we're just on 1.89, so we're just under 2 to 1 across the 15 metre band. Hi folks and welcome, my name is Colin, call sign MM0OPX. This video is about my 15 metre Moxon antenna that I've just recently built. Now if you've been watching a few of my last videos you know that I built a Moxon for 10 metres. I'll put a link to that down in the description. This antenna is much the same principle although I'm using slightly a larger diameter uh, poles for the spreaders. This time I'm using 9.5mm poles um, which work very very well. Add a little bit extra weight but it's a much much bigger antenna uh, going from 10 metres to, to 15 metres. And um, not only that, the antenna was a little bit floppy, so I've used some pre-tensioning wires and again I'll show you them a little bit later on. I do apologise for not getting more field tests than usually when I like to do these videos. I like to set up the antenna and then let you see some contacts being made on the with that antenna. But the there was a massive solar storm yesterday, which I didn't know about, but I did manage to get one contact in the log and that was a DX across the pond, so I was actually very happy making that on 10 metres and I'll show you that um, a little bit later on. So, without further ado, let's take a look. So everything that I've got here in front of me here is hopefully all I'm going to need to actually put up the moxin. So, I've actually got two antennas inside uh, this bag. I've actually got the 10 metre moxin and the 15 metre moxin. Hopefully I'm only going to need one of those because I could run the two bands, um, so 10 and 15 on the 15 metre spreaders. But uh, just for testing purposes and somewhere to store it, both are in here just now. Pole I'm using is this Life's a Breeze 10 metre pro pole. Um, I'm only going to have this up about 6-7 metres and we've got a load of coax here, it's three different lengths here. This is Messi and Plony Ultra Flex 7. So let's have a look in the bag first. And I'll just go through the main items. Um, for me this is probably the star of the show. This is the um, centre divider. We've got our element, this is our um, antenna wire that we're going to be using. This is our pretensioner wires which we need for the 15 metres elements because they're quite um, wobbly if we don't have those. So we need those. We've got our feed point here, pre-made from RG316. Um, this is a guy belt from a spider beam. Um, I don't think I'm actually going to need this but this is if you need to guide the, the mass further up. Um, again, longer guy, guy ropes if you want to use that guy belt. And um, we've got um, rebar um, tent pegs, heavy duty tent pegs. I've got a load of these, these are really good galvanised. These are short gar wi gar guy wires for guying the pole at the bottom. And what else do we need here? We need the little clam cleats for the guy ropes. And everything else we've got in here is actually all the 10 metre things. Oops, one very important exception. This is actually all the spreaders for the 15 metre mocks in here. So there's actually four sets in here. Um, and you can see I've got them identified by this yellow heat shrink that's on them. So we're going to need those as well. Now, everything else in here we've got exactly the same, but for the 10 metre pole. And I'm using a lot of these little bungees, which are very, very handy. Again, this is the 10 metre spreader, a centre, 10 metre um, poles. These are eight, these are actually 8 millimetres. Or it, the, well, these are 9.5, so these are a good bit heavier. And that's the wire for the 10 metres. Yep, so I don't think we need actually much more out of this. So what we'll do now is we'll actually get it set up.
Now I just want to have a little close up look at the antenna so you can see what I've actually done. So there we've got the feed point and obviously it's stainless steel wire so RG316 coax coming off that. So it's got some liquid tape there like so. And uh, across to the ends you can see that there's a lot of metal towards the ends and I think this is what's probably affecting the SWR a little bit. So you can see I've got the pretensioner wire there and I've also got the, the element wire on it here. Here we've got our, our insulator for the middle. Same on both sides. It's exactly the same on all four corners. And then up in the middle you can just see here we've got our pretensioner ropes, wires, string down to the centre divider, whatever you want to call it, clamped onto the pole. So with the antenna, it's actually up in the air, like so. Um, there's a little bit of breeze, but now, I don't think this is just perfectly optimised yet, but if we look at the SWR here, hopefully you can see that. So you can see that we're just on 1.89, so we're just under 2 to 1 across the 15 metre band. Now, that's not absolutely terrible. I'm not going to lose too much sleep about that. Um, we're still 2 to 1 across the band, um, but I do have some ideas, and I think there's maybe some, um, like the ends of the poles, the ferrules, they're, they're metal, so I'm probably going to change those, which will um, hopefully help things. Five. Mike, Mike, zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray. Mike, Mike, zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray. Mike, Mike, zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray, five, nine. Five, nine, good luck. Two, Victor, two, six, Echo India. This is one of the developments I wanted to do, was actually put 10 metres on here. And I've actually done that off the same feed point. Hopefully you can see that clearly enough. But we always run into problems. And effectively, it's like a, if you think about it like a fan dipole, we're getting some interaction. So if we look at the analyzer, we can see that we're actually a mile off. So I think I need to change the feed point arrangement, if I'm perfectly honest. You can see that we've got a like a dip up about 31 megahertz, and then we've got a dip down at 20.5 uh, megahertz. So certainly just now we're not going to get two bands working, but that's something that uh, that I need to work on for the future. Um, and it's a, you know it's something I do want to develop because I think having two bands on the one Moxon will be great. But for now, we just need to look at the um, the 15 meter. So there we are. That's just a little overview of the the 15 meter moxon that I'm working on. You can see that it's just not quite there yet. I mean, it's perfectly usable, um, but that SWR, I'm not quite sure. While it's just under two to one, moxons have a kind of funny double dip. Um, and the antenna certainly has that. I've experienced that with all my antennas, and actually doing a bit of investigation. So the the, the Basically, the shape of the dip the, is, is is correct. It's just not quite low enough where I would like it to be, and I think that's perhaps got something to do with the the ferrules on the end of the pole. So I'm going to change those to plastic and see if that makes any difference. Um, developing the antenna a bit further, you could see that it didn't work on 10 meters and 15 meters. I could have cut the wires to suit, but then I don't think the antenna would perform. You may think it would be for performing, but it wouldn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make uh, basically a coaxial jumper with the RG316 and we'll see what happens there and we'll see if we can get a, a dual band Moxon working. Um, but behind the scenes I am planning a hex beam antenna. I had a hex beam many years ago, I had to sell it, it was a great antenna but I'm actually thinking about making a field portable um, uh, hex beam. I was only going to make it for 15 metres up, but I'm thinking I might just go the whole hog and make it 20 through 6, but but we will see. But I'm going to use the same method as I've been using for these moxins. I'm going to be using the fibreglass tent poles, and because you need to pre-tension them anyway, just because they're that kind of small, I don't think it'll matter. I think that uh, that'll work. So please, folks, please stay tuned. Hopefully, in the next few weeks, I'm going to get some field testing done with the this 15 meter moxin, and hopefully, we can get some nice DX in the log. 73 for now, and we'll catch you on the next one.